Hi everyone, Pastor Tracy here. I just want to take a little time and encourage you today regarding the aspect of our soul. Um, sometimes, you know, we, we don't realize how our soul is impacted by things that have happened to us. Um, our soul, um, the Bible makes it clear that there, we have three parts to us. That the spirit man is what's born again. When we've been born again, our spirit man's made brand new. We are a new creature in Christ. Um, all those old things have passed away. All things have become new. Um, and then there's our soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions. And then there's just our our flesh, our, our, our you know that that outward flesh. But I want to spend a little time talking about the soul because the Bible actually deals a lot with the soul. And many times we'll actually hear the term where people are talking about you know inner healing and things like that. And in principle. Um, I understand what they're talking about, but we need to realize that our inner man is our spirit man. And when, when we've been born again, that is the core, that is who we are. And that, that part of us um, is whole. Um, the part that sometimes can have been hurt, damaged, and needs healing is on the soul realm. And that can be um, things that have, you know, our emotions have been infected, our you know, we deal with things in our mind because of things, you know, we have a memory and, and we deal with things along that line. Um, but the Word of God has a lot to say about that. And sometimes we separate um, how God works in us uh, when it comes to things around that. Um, and I just want to go to James chapter 1, and I'm going to start in verse 21. And it says, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. And then I want to go on and read a little farther, but I'll come back to that core verse. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. And and I just want to go back to that original one where it says, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness. Um, when you look into that and in the, the Greek, that's with um, humility, um, the implanted word. Um, some, some translations say the engrafted word. Um, if you look what that means, um, like it, the implanted and grafted word, just think about what an implant is. It means you put something in you or in whatever it is. It gets implanted and it becomes a part of whatever it is implanted into. Um, if someone gets an implant in their body, then it becomes a functioning part of them. And so the implanted word, that's something that we have actually put in us and it becomes a part of us. And it says that we can, um, it's able to save our souls. If you look up the word save in that, it has, it's from the Greek word sozo. Um, and, and that is what, basically that's the word salvation or save for as far as when we look at what Jesus did. Um, and what goes along with the word sozo is deliver, heal, preserve, make whole. Um, and so he is able to heal and make whole with through that and graft. When we implant the word in us, it is able to make whole and heal our souls. Um, and and that's that's such a vital thing to understand. Um, sometimes we lean so much on natural things regarding you know uh, healing and health of our souls and the mind and things like that. And there's. There's definitely principles and resources in the natural that we can look to and gain from. But it, but the Bible, the healing of the soul is going to come from implanting that word. Um, you know, Psalms 23, 3 says that he will restore our souls. Um, you know, and so it, it's through him. And if you go farther, when we read on past that, it continues to talk about the importance of being a doer of the word and how important that is and what it looks like if we're not. And it tells us that it's like a man who looks in a mirror um, and sees his natural self and then walks away and forgets what kind of man he was. And that's kind of what happens sometimes when we are dealing with things um, in, in, in our mind and our emotions. 
Um, they can overtake us and things that happen to us can really cause us to forget who we are. Um, when, when, when all those feelings, all those things that have happened, all those circumstances override and become more real and true to us than what the word of God says about us. And, and then we do forget who we are. We forget that we are that child of God. We forget what the word of God says. When it's implanted in us, it becomes a part of us. So then we're able to more easily distinguish between you know, the feelings and the things that happen and that even are set in our mind. And we are able to look to the truth that says, no, I'm not that. Um, I am a child of God. I'm loved by him. I'm more than a conqueror in this. I can cast my care upon him because he does care for me. And, and then that word, when it's implanted, then that is what is a part of us. And these other things we're able to separate um, because it says that he is, is able to save, deliver, protect, heal, preserve, and make whole our soul. And so I just want to encourage you in that. I, I, the value of the word as far as healing, um, not just for our physical body, but also for that, the things that maybe have happened to us that have, that have caused us to struggle in other areas. He's able to heal that, but we've got to, it's the implanted word. And that's something that we must take time to put in and lay aside those other things that may have been hindering us from being able to get that implanted word in us. So just want to encourage you with that and hope you have an awesome day.